Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Weather School for Kids. Our forewarned weather team, well, we each divide up the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 11 o'clock, and we pick different topics. If you've missed some of our topics, they all live on our WSMB website. So check it out, WSMB.com, and go to that for home section and you will find all the videos that we've done so far. But today we've got a brand new lesson for you. Has your mom or your grandmother or your sister or maybe you said this phrase, ah, it's a bad hair day. Well, why is it a bad hair day? Well, could be the wind, yeah. Or it could be something else. Maybe it's the humidity that is in the air. That's right. So the weather does affect whether you're having a good hair day or a bad hair day. That's for sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about humidity. And in an earlier session, we kind of touched on it by talking about the water cycle. Sometimes humidity, you can feel it, but you can't necessarily see it. Let's take a little, little look more about what it is and how it is in this water cycle. Remember the water cycle, you can start anywhere in the circle, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, collection, and just keep going around. When we zoom in on evaporation, that's what we find out a little bit more about humidity because evaporation is turning a liquid into a gas or a vapor. So here's what happens. We have moisture that is turned in to water vapor. And when we talk about humidity, we're talking about how much water vapor is in the air. And our hair is impacted by that. So we would like to know how much is in the air. So here's one way we can find out. Weather instrument. And this, as you can see here, H-Y-G-R-O-N-E-T-E-R, -E -E and a lot of our weather instruments have meter on the end of them, like thermometer, and hygrometer is what this weather instrument is. So it measures the amount of moisture, the humidity that is in the air. And today, I thought it would be fun if we made a hygrometer ourselves, and this one we will make out of hair. It's gonna look a little something like this. So let's head over here to our table for just a second. And then we're gonna go back because I'm gonna show you what all you're gonna need. So here is what it's going to look like when we're done. And I've got some of the supplies. Hopefully you can have something you can use at home to do this with. And I'm always the queen of improvising so we can find something similar that will work if you don't have these exact ingredients. But let's talk about what you're going to need. Here's our list. You're gonna need two push pins, a cardboard craft stick, and that's the part you can make if you don't have that at home, an index card, a paper tube, like a toilet paper roll, a hair dryer, you're gonna need a shower or sink, I'm sure you have that one, a little bit of tape, and I wish I could say we were gonna use horse hair because it really works the best, but since you know most of us don't have horses, we're gonna use a human hair. So I will tell you, Please don't snatch somebody's hair out of their head. Ask them nicely if you can have one of their hairs. If yours is not long enough, I wish I would have asked my daughter for one of her hairs because she's got really long, thick hair, but forgot to do that. But let's take a look at these uh, key things that we're gonna need once again. And I mentioned to you the push pins, so we have several of those here. And then here is our cardboard craft stick. Now, you can make one, and I made one here. What I did is I took just a box, a cereal box, and I cut this out. I made it four inches long, and I put some holes on either end of it because you're gonna thread the hair through those holes. You're also gonna need an index card, which we have here, and a paper tube, there it is, and then a hair dryer, which I didn't bring down, but I'm gonna tell you what you need with that hair dryer here in a second. And then I mentioned the shower and the sink. That one, I'll tell you what you need that for in just a moment. And then some tape, tape would be very helpful. And then I mentioned a human hair. You can also get some out of a brush. Now today, so that we can see it a little better, I got a thicker piece of thread because I want you to be able to see what we're doing. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to pull our hair through one end of our craft stick. 
okay? That's why I wanted the thread, so I could see it a little bit easier and do this a little quicker for you, because you're gonna do this at a later time. Wetting it just a little bit, so it'll go through my hole here. And watch this, I've got the wind blowing out here today, so that's gonna make it a little extra challenging for me. Okay, mister, go through there. Don't wanna to waste too much time with this, but guess what, I got it through. Okay, so I'm going to tape that end. Now, wouldn't you know, thank you, roll B. Thank you to my helpful assistant here with my roll of tape. So we're gonna tape that in. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to pick an end and oh, about an inch or so from the end of the tube, we're gonna take one of our push pins and put this in, okay? And then, we are going to take another push pin and about the same distance from the end we're going to push that into the tube try to make it in a line okay and then next thing and remember this is I'm, this is supposed to be simulating here i'm just using the thread so it's easier for me to show you so we're going to roll that around that push pin okay like that and we're going to thread the other part through the other hole here we go again, let's see if she can do it this time. Come on. Remember I said that, there we go. Nothing like a little spit on there, huh? I said how that this is, the hair is susceptible to the humidity in the air. Okay, friends, this is gonna be contrary. All right, just to make this go a little quicker, I am going to wrap it around here and tape it on, all right? Oops, grab the wrong one. You know, it always, isn't it like that when you get in front of people and try to show them something that it always takes so much longer? Okay, so also the key here is when you make this adjustment, you wanna make sure that this stick is sitting out straight. Make sense? We call that perpendicular, so it's gonna go out straight. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our card and we're gonna tape it on just like that, long ways. Da, 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 da. Here we go. And you can do this a little neater. I'm doing it a little quicker, just so I can show you quicker. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. It got a little bit too far. Let's see, because I want it to go where you can really see that stick see and have the edge on the bottom of the tube like that okay got it okay now what do we do now that we have this together well I do want you to make a little mark onto the paper where this is gonna go where your stick is like it is right now here's the next part this is where we have to go and do something. All right, so this is what it should look like. So you've got your tube, your piece of a board back here, that is your index card. Your hair is gonna go right through here. You've got your craft stick or what you made out of maybe a cereal box and your two push pins right through there. So that's what it should look like, something like that. Now, what are we gonna do with this? Well, we're gonna take our new weather instrument into the bathroom, turn on the sink, or the shower and close the door. Now we're gonna let you do this for about two minutes after you get this made, okay? Go in there and check it and then you are gonna take this and see if it changed because remember the hair should change whenever you get it wet or when it dries. So I want you to find out if it moves up or down and make a tick mark if it moves after two minutes. Then go back after 10 minutes and see which way it moves and if it moves more and make another little tick mark. So if you get two tick marks, the one that is the most extreme, that's gonna be humid, okay? That's the most humid. So you might wanna put more there. Now the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our blow dryer and you don't have to have it on the heat setting. Then you're gonna blow that hair and you're drying out the humidity that you just created. Does that make sense? So you're blowing out your piece of hair and then it should move again. 
and then you'll make a new tick mark when it moves. So whether it moves up or down, you're gonna make tick marks to show you if it was more humid or less humid. And then you can have a little fun with this and take this outside. Now remember, this is paper, my friends, so you don't want to sit it out in the rain. But you can, with the hair, not thread, tell if it's a little more humid, a little less humid. Now when we talk about weather on TV and specifically about humidity, we usually tell you about relative humidity. Have you heard us say that term, relative humidity? So basically what that means is that is how much moisture, how much water vapor is in the air relative to how much it could hold at that temperature. I know that sounds a little complicated, but when you have a certain temperature like 95 degrees, if we have so much moisture in the air that it makes it rain, then we have 100% humidity. So it depends on the temperature, and that's why we call it relative humidity. It's the water vapor in the air relative to the temperature. So if you hear us say the humidity is 95%, I hope we don't say that. It is really, really humid outside. If we say the relative humidity is 5%, it's much, much drier, and it feels nicer. So let's think about this. In the summertime, it's hot, and also it's humid here. Do you ever feel like when it gets really hot in the afternoon, you're just like, oh, I'm exhausted. I just feel kind of lethargic, kind of like I just want to sit down. A lot of that has to do with the humidity. So have you heard anyone or heard anyone say this phrase, it's not the heat, it's the humidity? Well, that's what they mean is that yes, it's hot outside, but because it's so humid, it makes you feel even hotter. So why is that? Well, let's take a look. You know when we get really hot, we sweat, right? So I'm gonna pretend that these little beads on my hand sweat. This is your body's natural air conditioning system. You sweat, or as ladies like to call it, we perspire. We sweat, and then, remember the water cycle evaporation? The water on our hand will evaporate into the air and get carried away. That gives us a cooling sensation. That's why if you're all hot and sweaty and you get under a fan, you feel so much better. That's because that sweat is evaporating off your skin. But if it's a humid day, the water is already in the air. There's already so much water vapor that there's not a lot of extra room for the water, the sweat off of your hand to go into the air. So I know most of you don't wear pantyhose, but you girl dancers or you guy dancers who wear tights, can you imagine putting your tights on your sweaty leg? Ooh, that's gross, that feels so gross. That's the way it feels if it's really humid outside and hot. It just feels kind of gross and it really messes up your body's natural air conditioning system. So that's why you feel so much hotter when it's humid outside as opposed to if the air is really, really dry. So that's why we say it is not the heat, it's the humidity. Well, here is what I have for your homework, okay? Here's your homework. I would love to see the hygrometer that you take a few minutes to make and maybe you could share some of your results. Let me know if it worked, if the hair moved. If that one doesn't work for you, I have some other plans for other weather instruments that you can make that might work better for you so I can send those to you. So we've got a different recipe for making hygrometer. So let me know. I'd love to see a picture of the one that you make though and I'll put those on television too. Or if you'd like to just draw me a picture of a bad hair day, I'd love to see that as well. And you can email both of those to me at lspencer at wsmv.com, one or the other. And by all means, if you have any questions, I would love to hear those as well. You can email them to me at lspencer at wsmv.com. Now, if you have some topics that you would like to learn more about here on our Weather School for Kids, we would love your suggestions. We've got about three more weeks. We're gonna go through oh, about the third week or so of May because you know, that's typically when you would be out of school. 
But if you would like to go back and take a look at some of the ones that you've missed, I mentioned to you, you can find them at WSMV.com on that for home section right there at the top of the page. Or you can also check out all of my weather for, for kid, my weather school for kids on my YouTube channel at Lisa Spencer. And I also have some other videos on there as well about how mountains are formed and a little bit about woolly worms. You might want to check those out as well. Well, I hope you've learned a little something today. And I do challenge you to make your hygrometer at home. And I would love to see a picture of it. I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you for joining us right here on Weather School for Kids.